Hi guys, you're really welcome to this channel, NarcCon. Today we're going to discuss no contact and no contact and what it actually does to the narcissist. So this is from that point of view, rather than the benefits of no contact to you, which we could do uh, a podcast on. It could be interesting. People find no contact very, very difficult with someone who you've been really intensely involved with particularly when that person disappears into thin air and you're left with this excruciating pain and a lot of questions and no closure. And it's a huge discipline to ask of anyone to be that disciplined and cold when you're in a highly difficult emotional state. But as I know you've heard before, when you've been receiving your education, just like I did, on how to deal with narcissists and what went on and what constitute, constitutes a narcissist, we all heard about no contact. We were recommended to do it by people who had traveled this journey before and by people who understood from a psychological point of view the benefits of no contact in relation to ourselves and also in relation to recovering from a narcissist. But let's delve into what it actually does to the narcissist, because this may give some of you a boost in relation to, you know, having been left very hurt and having been left angry, um, a boost in into understanding that this is unpleasant for a narcissist. This is very unpleasant for a narcissist. So it may even up the balance a little bit and we're all human beings and we're not perfect. And when we have been in a situation with someone who has treated us abysmally, a little bit of balance might actually help to start you off, kickstart you in the healing journey. It's invaluable information if you can implement this from the beginning of your discard or when you escape from the narcissist, you're really furlongs ahead on the race course. But d implementing this at any stage will have an effect, will have a strong effect on both you and the narcissist. So let's get into what actually goes down in a narcissist's mind and how it affects them when you establish a no contact regime. No contact is actually blocking the narcissist from any information on you. So that's blocking them on social media, blocking their phone number, blocking emails in every way. Block them. You don't talk about them to anyone where that information may go back to them. And you basically are hidden, hidden from anyone that has anything to do with the narcissist. That's no contact, guys. That is no contact. I'd even go further to say you try, and this is a really hard one, you try not to dwell on them or at times when you do, it's in a, a positive light so that not on, in relation to the narcissist, but in a positive light for you and your healing journey that you're making progress because I believe that there's an energetic connection that they can actually feel, that they work on deciphering and discerning and nearly sniffing out people's energy and that it's a kind of a, a spiritual and energetic connection that we can have with them for quite a long time after the discard or the disappearance of them because it's been very intense it's been excruciatingly intense and I believe when you bond with someone to that level that that energy that's formed from that doesn't just dissipate, you actually have to work on that. And I hope that doesn't sound too cookie, but that is a belief of mine. And it's something I found to actually come to pass. So in order to understand what no contact does to a narcissist, it's good to look at narcissism and why a narcissist is a narcissist. It is proclaimed to be a personality disorder that's set up to self-defend 
the individual. And I, as I always say, it's a very offensive self-defense mechanism. But it has to go a certain way. And I mean, a lot of us, you know, when the narcissist disappears out of our lives or does something unusual, we kind of cloak it in mystery and why did they do this? And it's actually fascinating when you get to the healing stage, the personality disorder, if you're interested in psychology. But a lot of us will look at, you know, what are they doing now? Like, how are they feeling? How could they do this? All normal questions, you know, that we are left with in relation to the narcissist. And I'm telling you now, guys, there is nothing mysterious, nothing wonderful, nothing amazing about this person. They have built us up to think that and the disappearance is like dramatic and we're kind of half fascinated by how the hell could this happen? Um, and we tend to maybe elevate this person in relation to their the mystery around how they do what they do. They all do the same thing. They just do little tweaks in the variations of this. They're all driven by the same energy. They're all driven by the same behavior patterns. So knowing that, you will know exactly what the narcissist is thinking. The more educated you get, you will begin to understand that this is boring, that they all do the same things. There's nothing individual about them other than the, the maybe the way they particularly look or a talent that they may have. As a person, they don't hold value because you can't have a sustainable or a rewarding relationship with them. The only thing that will happen in a relationship with a narcissist on in an intimate setting or a family setting or where you're very close with them is your personal destruction. It is possible to have a transactional relationship with a narcissist that's not too invested in you, like in a business setting, provided it's all going that you're both going in the same direction. But there that there I digress from the main topic. So narcissists have to build a reality. That's their reality. And when things don't go as they see reality, that's a threat to their control. So they have this anew pinned from the very start of the relationship when they love bomb you. They source you and they see you as an advantage to them. So they put the work into gaining control over you by, as we all know, the love bomb stage. They then set about their various manipulations to further control you because the devaluation in itself is a further control and can get you to pump out further supply and can embed you more firmly in making the relationship work and giving more to the narcissist. The discard in itself is set up to provide, to confirm the narcissist's view of their reality. It's to uplift them, it's to empower them, and actually it's to give them further control over their target. By giving a cruel discard, by giving no closure, by believing in their own reality, and remember narcissists really do know how you tick, they learn you and they have a very good idea about the level of pain that you're going to be in, the level of elevation that you'll have them in, possibly when they leave you, this is what they would believe. This is the, the reality trajectory of the narcissist. This has happened in previous relationships. They see no reason why it shouldn't happen to you because as far as they're aware, you're in the blind. You're unaware that they're a narcissist. You're unaware that you've been manipulated and you're still in love with this person or invested in them as a family member or very close with them in a work situation and reliant on them being the person that they painted for you. So they're 100% invested in you believing in the reality that they've set up. They, they, they are convinced of the fact that you are going to be looking for them, that you 
won't certainly be in no contact, but you'll be trying to find out information about them, that you'll be still in love with them, that you'll still want the relationship back on track, that you'll be willing to compromise and you'll be willing to pour out a lot of attention and supply to get them back. So they'll also send their flying monkeys if they don't hear from you for, for a certain length of time to check on you and they'll be checking your social media to see how you're doing. And the worse you're doing, the better they feel. Because that means you're on, under severe control. They've really pinned you down. They've crushed you. And all they have to do in their minds is wag their little finger and you'll come running back and you'll be the best supply that they've had in a long time for a temporary period. So they have to set the discard or the, the leaving of the situation up as part of their trajectory to confirm their reality, that they're the winner in the situation, that you're the loser, black and white thinking, and that they feel elevated and empowered to go on to another relationship, having sucked a lot of supply from you, be it material supply, be it money, be it just somewhere to live, your time and attention, a child, a business, whatever they've gained from you, plus the attention and adulation. They want to hold on to the possibility and the impression and their reality of you adoring them still and wanting them still. So what they expect is to hear back from flying monkeys that you're suffering and what they expect in order to support the pillars of their false reality is you to be looking for them, you to be texting them, you to be following them, you to be spying on them, you to be looking for information on them. And the more they hear about your suffering and about you contacting them, the more texts they get, the more emails they get, the more confirmed they are in their false reality and the more their narcissism does what it's intended to do, empowers them, makes them feel fueled up to go on to another situation. So it props up their false reality. It props their narcissism does a good job because you have bought into each stage, if you have, of their trajectory, the way they set up the intimate relationship to go, the cycle. You buy into the cycle. You believe in them of, of be, as being a person of value and you feel like it's a loss, them leaving. You feel it's a special situation. You wonder why they left and you want to solve it like any human being with empathy would would try to do. And you've also been gaslit. You've also been psychologically abused. You've also been spiritually abused. So you're not in a position to make a very good judgment call. But once you get the information on narcissism, once you know about what you were dealing with, what kind of a, a type of a physical form that you were dealing with, that can go out the window once you radically accept that you were with a narcissist and understand how a narcissist operates and thinks. Herein lies the beauty of no contact. Besides what it can do for you on your healing journey, if you don't play into the narcissist's game plan and build the foundations and all the building blocks and hold up the pillar of their false reality about who they are, about who you are, about how the situation actually is. The narcissist gets extremely agitated. It doesn't happen overnight because remember the narcissist is overly confident and overly entitled and overly buoyant in knowing that you're going to be in a great amount of pain. The doubt sets in after a certain time frame. After the narcissist hasn't heard from you, perhaps sent a flying monkey in your direction just to check up on you or to heat check you. And the flying monkey comes back and says, mm, I mentioned you, but she, she didn't really want to think about you. She didn't want to talk about you. 
She said she just moved on to another subject. She didn't even answer my question. She said she's doing great or he said he's doing great. Looking fantastic, like really um, new job, you know, moved. This is not what the narcissist wants to hear. This is cracking their reality. This is a dangerous place for a narcissist to be in. This discombobulates the narcissism isn't actually working. They've been empowered in their false reality, heading off to a new supply, perhaps. And that energy that you, that their false reality gives them of them being this great guy or girl helps them, empowers them with the new supply and energizes them in relation to their next love bomb phase. So they're all concentration on the new supply with you, you safely in their back pocket. Whenever they need to take you out and blow their nose on you, they have you in their mind. But when the flying monkey comes back and says, mm, I don't think that she or he's actually all that interested in what you're doing. I, I think it looks like they've moved on really quickly. And, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, I know you keep talking about them. They'll be saying the flying monkey saying this to the narcissist. You know, I know you're interested in them, but I don't think they have that same level of interest in you. And the more frustrated the narcissist gets at you not contacting them, the more you don't play along with their game plan, with their trajectory into their false reality, the more the narcissist becomes interested in you. The more the narcissist focuses on you as a kind of a, an uncomfortable feeling, the less the narcissist looks favorably on the new supply, and the more the game plan is changing, because remember, they need you under control as an option in case they want to come back to you. They need to know that their false reality is real. They need you to prop them up, to send them off on their way, to be powerful and empowered in order to quickly reel in the new supply. I know you get it, guys. So you're cracking their reality by not contacting them, by not playing their game. To, to regain control of you, they may at that stage start a small smear campaign that's localized, that's not going to get back to you because subconsciously they want you to contact them. If the localized smear campaign doesn't work for them to feel that they have control of you still, they're trying to convince themselves that you still want them desperately. The feedback they're going to get in that little smear campaign is going to come back as you seem really a little bit obsessed with your ex, but she's not or he's not obsessed with you. Like they don't want to talk about you when I see them. They're getting on with their lives and then the worst thing they can say to a narcissist is their friends and family start to tell the narcissist that maybe they may need to move on. This is what if you had gone not gone no contact, perhaps your friends and family may have been saying this to you, unaware that you were dealing with a narcissist and that you'd been narcissistically abused. Well, when the narcissist hears this from the friends and family, that really blows their cool. That really blows their cool because it's not meant to be like this. It's not meant to go down like this. They're not the ones obsessed with you. You should be obsessed with them. This is actually a huge narcissistic injury. This does stimulate a narcissist to take the focus off the new supply and puts it back on to you. And at that stage, if it goes on for long enough, you may get a heat check Hoover to see, to put them, to put them back into your mind and to check in and to see if your emotions can be stirred and to check in to see exactly what's going on. Because after all, you have to be broken. You have to want the narcissist. And guys, if you answered that heat check Hoover, if you haven't gone fully no contact 
and the narcissist has some means of getting a message to you and you respond or react in any way, even if it's just a, I don't want to talk to you or, you know, hi or goodbye or whatever. The narcissist goes, ah, I knew they were under control and their false reality comes woo, back again and they can believe in that false reality and that can set them up even for three, six months, nine months to go forward again, convinced, convinced of their reality and of their brilliance and empower them to go forward with a new supply. And you may say to me, well, Paula, I am actually really hurt. I am broken. I, I do want to hear from the narcissist if you're at that stage. The narcissist doesn't know that. We give them too much credit. They believe that, but they have to have a follow up action to confirm that for themselves. So in effect, in effect, no contact, as you can see, is the only thing that actually affects the narcissist. You sending them even hate texts or doing anything like that props up their trajectory and their reality. So without laboring the point, guys, I know you get it. But if you really want to seek any kind of balance or revenge or a feeling of empowerment over a narcissist or whatever, for whatever reason, besides your own healing, no contact is the big time, only time way to go. So I hope that's helped give you an insight onto how no contact affects a narcissist. And I hope that it gives you some validation or some relief from the pain of wondering what they're doing and the mystery that they try to surround themselves in and the superiority they try to take by discarding you before you have a chance to leave them when you've started to put some boundaries into the relationship. And I suppose that's it in a nutshell. And I hope that if you're tethering with your no contact regime, that that will stimulate you to continue it for yourself, for your healing, and to know that that's the way it actually affects a narcissist. Until the next time, guys, please take care of yourselves. Continue healing. Continue liking, please. It really helps. And thank you for the super thanks that I've received recently. We will be coming up with a new camera and microphone. So I hope that works out due to your kindness, your contributions, your subscription to the channel and your likes and every bit of involvement. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you. So thank you so much. And we keep the videos pumping out. Bye for now.